Hey everybody and welcome to another learn to digitize video. My name is Sue and I am a Hatch educator and today we're going to do some word art and uh, I think this looks great and it's so easy to do and once you learn this quick little technique technique um, it makes it so much easier you can do it for any occasion. You can do it for Christmas. You can come up with birthday ones, anything you Thanksgiving, um, not just Halloween and not just a witch hatch. So it's a lot of thinking outside the embroidery box, which we love to do. So let's get started. So let's go to a design. Let's pull up our artwork and I have mine on my desktop. So let's go right there. And it's just a simple design just of a witch hat that I just quickly drew out um, in vectors and turned it into a JPEG. So no big deal. The, the more simple the design, the better. It seems to work out a lot better. And let's look at the size, 13, that's a little big. Why don't we bring that down to 10, seven by 10. We could even make it a little smaller, eight. Six by eight, that might be a little too small. That's the other thing in this technique that you have to be careful is you don't want your writing to be too small. It's just not gonna work if you have small writing. Um, so, okay, let's uh, lock this down. The sh keyboard shortcut is K. So that just makes it so it doesn't move. I have a tendency of uh, moving everything all around. So everyone gets to here and goes, okay, now what? Well, the way I do it is I research some words and you wanna have a few words. It doesn't even matter how many, just a few, and they need to be um, big words and small words so you can fit everything in. So the way I do it is that I pick my words. Now I have a few, of course, we're going to put, whoops, Halloween. I have a new keyboard. Make sure everything's spelled properly. So we're just going to put Halloween right there. That's fine. Um, we can do another one. The second word was which. Um, you can put capitals if you want. You don't have to. And this is what I do. I just simply line them up here. Um, it's really easy and then I'll show you how I do it. It's, it's really nice. So what's another Halloween word? Um, scary. That's another Halloween word. And I just line them up just simply like this. Nothing else. Scary. What's another one? Wicked. Cause it's the wicked witch, right? So you gotta have a wicked word in there. Um, what's next? Let's see. Magic because witches are magic. So if you were doing this um, for, say, a family get-together, you could pick a simple shape and you could put all your family's names and move them around. What a great idea. It's so easy. Again, once you get the hang of this, it's really fun. Broomstick. And those are all the ones that I use. And I just simply line them up. And then I think of, uh, and it could be any shape, it could be anything. But the way I do this, let's get it into view here. We should be zoomed in a bit more, but that's okay. I think now Halloween, that's the one of the longest words. So I'm going to put it right there. Broomstick to me looks like it's going to fit right in there. Actually, with not a whole lot of work. Um, we could put, um, what could we put? We know it's a witch. Um, how about magic can go up here kind of on this part. That looks to me that would fit. And then wicked, we can put, uh, click it again and you get this arrow and you turn it. So I'm just gradually kind of placing the words where I'm going to put them generally. Now it's just a little bit of playing going on. It's super fun. Don't worry. It's always fun. Um, and we don't have to use which I don't think I have a place for it. So we're going to leave it there. The next thing I do, let's pick our colors and you play around with fonts. So we're going to take a guess. We don't, you can leave them block, but I think um, changing the font makes it even better. So for this one, I picked uh, Edwardian script because I like the H on it. And let's see how this is going to fit. See, that's going to be really neat. 
and we can curve it around. I think that's a little bit too big. So basically what it is, is making everything fit. So there's a few things that we can do. Now, if you were just to leave it like this, it just simply looks like a whole bunch of words. Even if you made these guys bigger and did everything, we want it to kind of fill out the areas. And that's why I said earlier, make it a simple shape. We don't want anything too complicated because you really don't want to manipulate the lettering too much. Um, we're going to do a fair amount, but we don't want to do it too much because then you can't, I've seen some, um, you can't read the words. And if you're doing word art and you can't read it, that kind of defeats the purpose. So then the next thing I do is I kind of look at what shape we want. So generally what shape, and I'm going to do this word art here and look what happens just right away. That looks more to the curve of what we're looking for. Now we're going to even more manipulate everything and look how the N now fits in. The H doesn't quite, but let's move it. So we're stretching the letters against all typography rules. Uh, but look how nicely that fits in now to the curve, almost exactly to that. And that's basically how you do it. You just kind of come up with a plan like this. But let's take this a bit further because obviously this fancy little crook on the H is going over a little too far. So we're going to take the letters and we're going to go right here to break apart. And you'll see on the right hand side, it separates. So now you can do each letter. And why don't we make this H fit in just a little bit better? So let's manipulate it and make this H fit a little bit better in here. We want the crook part the little swirly part and we've overlapped, but that's okay because we can move it around still. See, doesn't that look a little bit better? And we can do quite a few things with this. We can skew the letters if we want. I actually kind of like how that fits. Uh, that's not too bad at all. Let's go to our reshape tool. Now it is still considered an alphabet. So you still have this. And what this does, this is the envelope that we put on it. See if you change it. Now this is only for the H. It's not doing the whole thing because we're only talking about the H here. So if you wanted to, you know, manipulate it around, that's fine. What if you want to take it off? Just take it off, remove art. The H is going to move. Whoops, let's not do that. How many times have you guys done that? I do it all the time. We need to go back to our select tool. Our H moved, but that's okay. It, what it is, is it's not in that envelope, but we can make it look like it's in that envelope. So we're going to rotate it just a little bit and we're going to move this H around. We want it to kind of sit there. So we want to move it around so you can kind of get the idea of how you make everything fit. And that to me looks just about perfect. We don't have to do any more to it, maybe just over a smidge, but it should be okay. And we've got to make sure we have our closest joins on. I have mine set up automatically to do that way. Now look how that looks now. That looks like you custom digitized it. Now, the next thing I want to take this N and I'm going to make this N just a little bit bigger. Uh, with, there's nothing wrong with that a little bit bigger. Actually, I'm going to make this guy a little bit smaller and make this guy a little bit bigger and then it kind of fits in. So it's getting smaller to bigger. I'm actually going to change this just to a brighter color so we can see what we're doing. And we'll make sure, yeah, that's just a little jump stitch. Actually, I can turn it back to purple. It's just hard to see it. It's okay if there's a little tiny gap there. If you want to fix it, then we're just going to make it a little bit bigger and it matches up. We can make this one. Actually, I probably wouldn't change that. I do want to change the end a tiny bit. You don't have to be that precise or you can be. You can change it around, but look how nicely that fits in. I absolutely love it. Let's move on to broomstick. So the broomstick, um, change the font again. Uh, you can leave it if you want. I thought this one was cool for broomstick uh, font. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of pulling it out and it's quite a bit of playing to make it work. Let's zoom right in so we can see what we're doing. Not too much. There we go. Mm, how does that look? We don't want to put any uh, art on it 
but why don't we stretch it a little bit? We're going to move a couple of them up and a couple of them down. So let's do this one. Let's do break apart and you're going to see what I'm going to do here. Now we can skew them. We can just simply bring them up. And I think that would be a cool effect. Let's do that too. And you see already it's starting to come together. I absolutely love doing art like this. So the key is don't make it too small. Don't manipulate your letters so much that you can't read them. What I'm doing here, I am stretching them, but you still will be able to read it very clearly. And that's very important. Once you get it done, stand back a little bit, see what you think. Can you read the lettering? Can you read the names that you're putting in there? If you can, then it's probably fine. So manipulate everything, change it, but don't change it too much. Don't, don't move them you know, out of line sort of thing. Sometimes C's get funny when you stretch them out. No, that's fine. We're going to move this K up because he's kind of, kind of a little off there. And we're going to move that up. Now look, just a few clicks and you can clearly see it. Let's step back a little bit. Yep, I like it. And it's a different font. Awesome. All right, let's go to magic. Uh, what kind of font can we pick for magic? We could leave it just to be different. Now we're going to put the magic in this part. So maybe we'll leave it just as a block. Why not? Click it again. We can rotate it. We're going to generally get it in the area that we want. Hey, did I forget to change my colors? I think I did. Judging by all these connections that I can see, I should have changed broomstick. So I'm going to click and I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to go all the way down broomstick. And why don't we change that to yellow? And that looks great. Should we put our true view on? Yep, I think we'll leave our true view on. It's just a little bit easier to see. Look at how pretty the Halloween looks. So easy to do. So easy. I love the broomstick. I'm really happy with broomstick. Let's go up to magic. Let's see what we can do to magic. So that just kind of looks like it was just basically plunked in there. So let's break this apart right from the beginning. Let's move our C. You can move the spacing around. I'm actually going to leave the C just like that. I don't think I want it yep, too far over. And then we're going to move the I. And I might angle the I. Let's zoom in a little bit. I might angle the I a little bit. See how it's not quite straight? Now, you can spend a lot of time on this, or you could not. Um, you'll just get different effects for it. And I don't seem to be doing, you know, a huge difference in it. That fits nicely. We're going to move them down. I don't want them too close to my eye. Move it down. So it's really easy to do once you make yourself a little bit of a plan. You can do it. You just pick the letters and make everything fit as best as you can. See, I might tilt. Let's move the M a little bit out of the way. I might tilt this one. Now this is going to be bigger and that is okay. We'll still be able to read the word. And it'll still fit in, you know, basically into the shape that we want. Now that's a okay size. That works. What about the M? See how much we can do on the M. It might be too big to do. We can always put it in between. No, I kind of like it up at the top. And I actually really like the angle. Mm, no, that's kind of skewing it. I don't really want it skewed. Let's try. Nope, don't want that either. Hmm. Now what can we do with this one? Width. Well, let's try the skewing. That seems to be. Yeah, see, that actually worked. How cool is that? And that's right here. And we we're just trying to make it fit right here and right here. Now let's step back and look. Yes, isn't that fantastic? And it looks great because it fits right into what we want. So let's go to our magic. Let's go here. And we just left that one in block and that's fine. How about we make it orange? Starting to look like a witch hat. Let's step back, have a look. I absolutely love it. I think the swirly on the Halloween is really wonderful. Okay, so now the turned around ones are a little bit hard. Let's start by making them you know, a little bit bigger. We want maybe the D up there. 
We need to bring it down, though. Ooh, we forgot to change the font, though. Hold on. Wicked, what are we going to do the font? Um, I think the one I had was really cool, actually. And you know, of course, when you're going through the fonts, you can see them here. If you want to see them on your screen, you just press the up and down arrow. And that actually is wonderful for picking the fonts that we need. See, I like all of these. Well, even that one would look really nice. That's border block. Let's keep trying, though. I kind of like this. So this is the best way to pick out your fonts. And we want fonts that we can read. We're going to kind of mess around with them. Oh, I kind of like that one. That's Arnold. Ariel is fine. Architect is small. Well, it's a witch, so we don't want flowers. I kind of like that one. That is Algerian. Yep, that's the one we picked. And I really like the serifs on it. So now we have to make this one a little bit smaller because that doesn't quite work. And I think we need to manipulate it a little bit more. So let's get the top of the W there. Yeah, and I think we need to stretch this one. So let's go ahead and just break apart once. And that breaks it from the word to the letters. And if we need to, we'll break it apart even more. So let's start at this W. And what can we do? I think the W is okay. Maybe I'm stretching it a little bit so it fits. I'm looking there and here. I'm a little bit over. Let's bring the I, I don't know, maybe up here. We can do pretty much whatever we want. Actually, I kind of like exactly just that. We're changing the kerning. We're changing everything, and that's okay. Maybe make the C a bit bigger. Yep, I like that. I am going to step back and just make sure that it looks good. It's kind of hard to do this on an angle, and you may fiddle around a little bit, but that's okay. It it works. Do we need that? Look, we don't even have to angle that guy. Make it bigger. We don't want it too big. Move it up just a little bit. I kind of like the way this is going. But you can see it's easy to do with any shape and you can spend a long time or not a long time and your results will vary depending on how long because you can go in and you can change these points. Let's do one just so you can see. You can We have to click on the E and do another break apart and you see it broke everything apart. And we can take this and we can go into our reshape and we can actually move the nodes. Now, again, you need to be a little bit careful doing this. You don't want to reshape it so it changes the word completely. And if you get stuck like that, see the blue there that's highlighted? You can hit the space bar and it just turned the whole thing to straight. And so you're not fiddling around. But you can do this and this and this. And now it conforms completely with the witch hat. Absolutely completely. Let's move this one a little back. And we're going to change the flare a little bit, but that's okay. Go back to our select tool. Let's double check. Nope. See, we didn't change it. Uh, it's still an E. We can see clearly. Now we can go ahead and do this one too. We need to do another break apart and click on this part and then again go into our reshape. It's actually a lot of fun reshaping letters. I think it's great. Um, and you can you can learn a lot about how lettering is put together. And I think that's Good. What do you think? Yeah. And see, now we're following the shape a little bit better. So let's get back to our D. What can we do with our D? I think maybe the D needs to be turned around a little bit. I thought the top kind of looked the same. And keep it close. You don't have to have it right on like that, but keep it close. And we're going to change the color. So let's step back. Look at how this is coming together so quickly. Now you can think, Christmas and you can have Christmas words or you can have your children's names and different happy sayings. A birthday party, you could have the birthday girl at the bottom. I don't think you'll do a witch hat for the birthday girl, but you could do a birthday cake with words. Why not? Absolutely. Why not? And again, it's just a matter of playing. Okay. We're on our last word here and we're going to stretch out this scary I wanted to change wicked, so it's this one. 
That selects both, but that's okay. What are we going to do? Maybe a red for it. And then we can just select, click off, click off, click off. We can select off. There we go. And we'll change this to what color? We could even do white. White isn't a scary color, but it's kind of a ghosty color. And uh, let's pick a font for scary. Go back to lettering. Let's pick a font and we can do anything we want. Let's try this. See, that's not going to be clear enough and it's a bit, a bit wide. But this is what you do. Just kind of scroll through and find something that See, that's kind of a scary font right there. I kind of like that. That's different than what I did before. And we want this one to kind of fit in. So we're really going to stretch this one. So let's go to our break apart and let's see what we can do. Now, again, you do have to be a little bit careful. I might actually make this one a tatami fill um, because we're going to stretch quite a bit because I want this S to stretch to fit in here and I don't want to see how good that looks already and because I changed it to tatami stitches and there's nothing wrong with that it's going to fit in handily and it still looks like an S we'll make sure though let's do the same thing tatami nobody says that satin has to be um you just have to put satin for your stitches you can do whatever you want and this is what I want. And I think it looks cool with all the turning ones. So let's move that maybe down a little bit. I like this font. I think this is cool. And again, we're kind of working upside down and uh, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure if I like that A anymore though. Maybe we have to angle it a little bit more. We'll step back. All right, we'll have to step back after. I'm not quite sure about that A when I pulled it out and started making it bigger. I'm not sure if it looks like an A enough. Now we don't want the Y to go much further than that. Let's move this so we go back to fill and go to tatami. And there we go. It's kind of maybe we'll make it touch right there. And stretch it out just a little bit here we don't want it right on the wicked we don't want it touching we want it close though we want it close I'm liking this so far I am going to angle this Y around and you can do that because we're going around a curve so we want the letters to go around the curve too and these little little things that you do kind of make everything come together now this one I have to remember to change to tatami as well which I kind of like now look how pretty look how awesome that fits in and we're still kind of holding our lines you know what we can do to make this even better let's go into this and let's go into our reshape and we can reshape this piece to go down you can do this you can do this just a little bit of reshaping and this is going to fill in kind of fill in the shape of the hat just a little bit more so as long as you're not doing too much you can do it and this are the little things that you do to make it fit a lot of people find this a lot easier to do in a graphics program but I think you can do it just fine in an embroidery program and then you can see how the stitches are going to look now let's go back is there another one the C kind of didn't quite make it there we need to move him ah oh, he was pretty close I kind of like that now let's step back and see how just changing those gives you more of the outline and can you still read it you have to look a little bit for that one and it's probably because of the a I might change that because I don't really like the a so wicked broomstick Halloween we can put see now we need something here another thing I thought of another way of doing this is making the Halloween smaller and then putting stretched out letters like we just did to the edge of the hat but we can try that after just ideas I'm just throwing ideas around why don't we put boo there because I think it needs a boo and we have a little bit of a space so let's just put boo uh, small yeah we can do small I think I want a different font than that because we're we want to keep it simple though for this one because we're going to be stretching it out so if you have anything too elaborate 
it's going to change and you'll be like, what's that word? I want Hannah. I don't like that one. Well, again, we're just going to pick. Oh, maybe a square boot. All right, see, I've got it already. Now we're going to zoom right in. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Now this one's going to be an up and down word. A little bit bigger, a little bit around. And we're missing the top of the witch hat. I guess I did that when I was creating it. Whoops. We're just going to guesstimate where it is. Roll with it, right? Let's go. I broke it apart. And we can do this one in. Let's do it all Halloween colors. So we'll do the B and we'll do orange and we'll do white just to make it extra cute. So let's go into our reshape and let's have a look at this guy and see what we can do. We don't want to do too much because we want it to still look like boo. And there's a lot of points in this. But if we just carefully now making it a lot thicker and smoother. See how that looks? And that's all I need to do for that one. I kind of like that O. It still looks like an O. We're still good. This one, let's make it bigger. We can stretch it out. So I'm going to guess that the top of the hat is right about there, maybe down a little bit more. And the B, you know, we can pretty much leave the B where it is, maybe a little stretching so it goes up. Now let's step back and have a look. Yep, it's still clearly boo. Clear as day boo. You always check. Again, I'm not impressed with the scary, but I do kind of like how the font fits in. And you see how the nice shapes around? You could go in, I guess, if you wanted and just change these ones a little bit. Let's go. It's, it's the little bits that you do that make all the difference. Can we break apart? We can. We can always break apart. Now we have pieces. And now we can go in and do our reshape. How much fun is this? I'm thinking there are a million things that everybody can do with this. Once you get the hang of it, it takes a little bit of practice. And it takes a little bit of fiddling around. But I think this is the most fun you can have with embroidery. Break apart. Let's break apart. It's keeping all of our letters together. We're just changing the shape. So reshape. And I just want the bottom of this to go right to the edge. You don't even have to be that precise. I'm just thinking it gives it a much better effect. And it's kind of starting to be what you want it to look like. Now this is the top of the eye and I'm just going to angle it so it fits in. And same with the G. Let's go back to the G. Seeing how we're doing it. We need to break that guy apart. So we select the, this part and we go up to our reshape. How's that looking? Now just carefully, I just want to pull it up a little bit so it's kind of angled down. Now this we can move down just a little bit. It's a curve. Now you got to be careful you don't make them too thick, of course. And as we were saying before, make sure it still looks like the lettering. You don't want to move stuff too crazy around. I think we have to break this apart, don't we? No, that looks like it is broken apart. How about we go back to our objects? And then we can tell we don't even have to guess. Yes, it is broken apart. I can tell it's highlighted and it's just that one piece. So now let's go up to reshape and let's see if we can get away with this because that would be kind of cool. Put it up here just, just a little bit. And that is too much. Why don't we hit the space bar? No, let's edit, undo, or control Z for that. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. I, I kind of think it might just kind of... Remember, we're up close, so you don't worry. It still looks like... Yep, it still does, and we can fix our M. Let's do our M. I could probably do this all day. Huh? I often have, actually. I often have. Let's go to our reshape. And I don't know how much we can do with the M, but let's just try. Let's see. We've got to make sure it still looks like an M by the time we're done. I might end up just reversing everything I'm about to do here, but let's try and see. All you can do is try, and if you don't manipulate it too much, I think you'll find you'll be successful. We might have to put another node in there. Maybe. 
that kind of helps a lot with the shape. Let's step back and see if we've ruined our M or not. No, it still looks like magic. This one is a bit thick, so why don't we just fix that? It's not that bad. I think it looks pretty good. We, uh, maybe I move stuff over, or maybe it's just how it looks. Well, I want to keep it even, don't I? There we go. And basically, you know what? We're done. We've got one more word to put in. See how great that looks? Um, you can move all these letters around and make them fit. Why don't we put in our witch down here? And we'll try one more effect on this. Let's zoom right in. What letter can we put on that? Um, what font, rather? So we can try this and we can do, whoops, I went too far. I think I like the memo font, although I might change my mind. The other beauty about this is every time you do this, you will make it different. It's almost impossible to make it the same way every time. And this is the fun of it. So we want it to kind of fill out this space a little bit. So why don't we try some of these art? So let's pull them up and see what we think. See if you had the top of a hat, you could stretch a word or the bottom. You could do it like that. So I'm thinking the first one, the bubble one. And that's kind of weird looking. So let's uh, angle it around because you can play with the angles. We're going to have to make it a little bit smaller so it fits in. I'm just looking at my edges and we may have to stretch it out. That's how we do it. And see what I'm watching is the bottom of the H as well as the top. And I'm just going to wiggle it just a little bit to make sure it's going to fit. We can afford to move this out a little bit more. And we can pull this down. We don't want it to go too far over. See, that fits kind of nicely. Now, I might change the font. Now that I've done all that, I might change the font to something a little more plain. Let's see here. Well, that's too plain. That's too plain, too. Something a little less kind of, um, what's the word? I don't know, kind of, yes, like that. What is that one? Aerial rounded. See, it's kind of slanted in there. And that, to me, fits much better. Now, if you wanted to change the shape, because remember, we put the shape on it, you can go to reshape, and there it is. So if you wanted to stretch it up like this if you needed to stretch it down a little bit to take a little bit of the curve off that works out perfectly and you can make everything fit absolutely everything fit we have a little bit of room here why don't we put another boo just for fun let's go right here and let's go boo maybe we'll do this one in all caps boo boo I kind of like it and we can angle it around make it a little bit bigger like this yeah what are we gonna pick not block we've already done block I try to pick the fun of this is that you pick a different one every time what about Garamond yeah that one's nice a nice standard font so I like that font let's make it fit a little bit better and let's use one of these word arts and I put it up here so I can see it and I kind of want it you know almost straight at the top and perhaps curved at the bottom so let's see what we've got here right here number seven and that seems to suit me fine so let's go in it just saves you a little bit of time of stretching the letters out and I kind of like that I'm gonna do a quick break apart and just so I can move this B up a little bit more and to me, that looks perfect. We can move this just a tiny bit. We don't want to get it too close to this lettering. And we keep a nice shape. Of course, we need to change the color. We haven't added any green, Halloween green. Let's add some Halloween green and make it stand out. So we've got all sorts of colors. You can do it all in one color if you wanted. But now let's look and see how well that looks how well it it makes the shape of the hat now there's a couple of things you can do i think that would look great let's hide it 
and we can see, I think it looks like a witch hat. If you wanted a little bit more definition, so let's do unhide all, you can always make a little outline and maybe you could put, you know, a motif stitch on it. So let's go to digitize and let's go to digitize close shape and let's do a little bit of an outline along here and I'm just right clicking to go around corners and you don't want too many. Now that one didn't work so you just go backspace we don't want nodes a whole bunch of nodes like that because you can't it's too many stitch penetrations and it doesn't look good so the least amount of nodes possible now I do want it to go out a little bit more but we'll show you a quick way oh I have auto scroll on oh no I can't stand that a little bit you don't have to stick exactly to it and we're just gonna work on a few things and it's really easy to change it once we get it going. So let's do all of our outlines. And there, and I'm just, whoops, I made a mistake there. Go back, so that should be a right click and a right click. And then we're gonna hit enter and it's done. Now that filled it in, that's fine for now. We will leave it. Let's do our next one properly and pick outline. We might actually leave it as an outline. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So let's start here and we're gonna go around the corner and we don't want it too close just because the picture is, we need to go by our letter. So just because where the picture is doesn't mean exactly where you have to put your lines. And I did it again, and I'm sure you guys do it too. It's this one. And we don't want it perfectly straight and we don't want it too close. We wanna maintain the shape that we're doing though, because I think that's cool. And my auto scrolls on, which I find annoying. Now you see the bottom of the K, you could go in and fix these so they're more to the shape. We didn't, however, so we're just gonna keep rolling on. The more time you spend on it with all these details, the better it's gonna look. You can spend a long time or not. That's what I say, let's hit enter. And that's just gonna be an outline and that's fine. Let's do the top of the hat. And then I'm gonna show you a couple different things you can do with it. So digitize open shape, outline. You should be zoomed in a little bit more. I'm just doing this quickly. Now again, we don't want it, the line of the picture is right there. We don't want it that close. We want it out just a smidge, not a whole lot even, just a tiny bit. Now I accidentally cut the picture off, so we're just going to kind of go with it and make it better, but that's okay. It shows you how to work with imperfect JPEGs, which you're gonna get a lot. So it kind of uh, it, it kind of helps you out inadvertently. So again, just moving along. I guess that auto scroll is handy. Makes me feel kind of out of control right here. And I think we need a couple of other things for this. Just coming, oops, see now that one went too far into the Y. I do like our scary word. I think it's kind of awesome. But hopefully by now you guys can see the possibilities with this. I don't like that little cutout there, although I guess it's affected where our placement of the C was. You could bring the C down if you didn't like it. And there we go. Still doing it. Still awesome. And we don't want it straight across, so I'm just right clicking and left clicking and I'm gonna hit enter right here and we have our outline so let's step back a little bit let's go to our select tool and let's play with it a little bit so we've got this one as black and we have put this one as black and we'll put this one as black so the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of my picture so I'm gonna unlock it and then I'm going to, and I'm just right clicking to do this. You can either hit the delete key or click on delete. And now we're just left with our embroidery. So you can see the outline, whoops, let's go back and click on the correct thing. And let's change this to outline just by clicking on outline. You can see the outline gives it a nice uh, special effect. I think it looks okay. 
Um, I quite like it. Why don't we try a different outline? A little bit thicker. How about a back stitch? A little bit thicker still. Stem stitch. Stem stitch is okay. So for this one, we can make that one a fill stitch. The only thing we have to do for that, let's go to our colors. Let's move all these guys up to the beginning. And then they're stitching out first, which is what we want. See, now I kind of like the filled in look. I kind of like that indeed. So let's try this all with filled in. Now look at this. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. And you could play around. You could take this here and we could add, um, we could do a few things to it because you don't have to just leave it plain. Although I really do think it looks fantastic like this. And I'm just in my uh, edit. I clicked on the wrong one. And we're going to go here to create outlines and offsets. And we want an outline. And I want it in, oh, what could we do? Maybe yellow. And I'm just doing it on the bottom part. And see, that's kind of cool if you want to add details like that. I don't think you need an outline on it. But just in case, what if you wanted a motif? Well, that one doesn't look very good. You could make one and make it look better. I personally don't like the outline at all. Not at all. Not at all, not at all. So I'm just going to delete it. And there we have our cute, our really, really cute design made with words. And again, experiment with it. You could even add a little spider to the end here we could just even just do it ourselves why don't we do that and then we can call it awesome and hopefully everybody has uh learned so left click right click kind of in the middle left click that's his head and then his body we'll do right click whoops there there everyone always okay we're gonna what we're gonna do is adjust them um i kind of went kooky there didn't i we kind of we don't want too many i am going to make this guy a bit smaller and here and hit enter okay that's kind of whoops that's kind of a weird shape for a spider but he's going to be scary i promise he's going to be really scary and we'll make him black he's kind of cute maybe the only thing we're missing here are legs we can make him a cute spider right we want to size it. So there's a lot of freehand things that you can do. We're going to put them right there. There's a lot of freehand things you can do to add special um, things to your embroidery just because the picture has it. Now I'm just going to do this in a run stitch and there and we're going to make a connection and we're going to do it again. And then back and we're going to make the connection. And he's got to have four legs and back and make the connection. So just kind of one thing. And I'm doing it on top so I can show you. And we're going to go around here. You could go straight across if you wanted. Round to the same thing. And we want his legs to be like that, perhaps. I think that might be a little bit too long. But just you can go around and you can change it afterwards, too. You don't have to be that precise and make our connection and we we almost have a spider here just a freehand spider try everyone should try freehand so one two three we need one more maybe i started them up too high i don't know spiders are kind of icky and there we go and then we're going to press enter and that looks terrible i know i know i know not so terrible now now we need to go back to our objects and we need to go down here and we need to move these leggies so they stitch first. And now our spider looks good. If you wanted to put little eyes on them, you could. But see, that's not so bad. A little bit, a little bit off, but you know it's a spider. You might want to make his legs longer, actually, if you were doing it. And why not make a little spider web? Because he's not going to be, you know, just sitting there. We need it to be white. And we could do just, and I'm holding down the mouse key. There we go, our little spider guy. And just a little bit of detail work. 
And how cute is he? It's a little bit hard to see, but that is how you work with lettering and make some really cute Halloween word art here inside Hatch. Thanks everyone for watching. I look forward to seeing your homework and you don't, again, you don't have to do Halloween. You can do family names. You can do birthdays, simple shape, make sure it's big enough and make sure you don't manipulate your lettering so much that you don't know what the words are. So do your lettering, step back, do a lot of your break apart, step back and look at it and make sure you haven't changed the lettering enough. But it's all with standard fonts that come with Hatch and it's a great, simple, personal project that you can do anytime. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next class.